Hey guys, Sarkat here, rocking my new Fall of RF t-shirt and the last remnants of scraggly hair in need of a haircut. Uh, today I want to talk about my new build, the Poison Quill Rain Scion. I've been collecting gear for it over the last week or so, while I convinced my friends to make the character. It is reliant on a lot of uniques, which I'll show off, and then I'll talk about the path of building stuff. It will work in a very similar function to my current um, Tornado Shot Immolate character. You get as much attack speed as possible using Tornado Shot or Barrage if you care about single targets. All the new fancy uniques which supply uh, lots of flat chaos, poison duration, poison damage, poison duration, a bunch of jewel stacking resists. This is a very, very unique heavy build. And using silly shenanigans with a life and mana gain on hit. Um, for full, full meme fiesta, or well, actually supporting something like 6,000 health per second just from raw attack speed. So, before we get into the raw mechanics, how will it work? Much like this character, get a bunch of attack speed, although it will be with a Quillrain. As much attack speed as possible. Each individual attack will apply poison snacks, then get as many additional projectiles as possible. And seems good. Anyone who saw anything of Mathel's Wasp Nest Poison character, very similar concept. Let's get into the build. So what inspired this? I've seen only one other person do this. Uh, someone posted a video on Reddit of a poison-based barrage setup. If you care about maximum DPS numbers, do I have it set up correctly? I believe so. You can quite easily reach uh, over 2 million DPS um, with very, very little setup, just Dying Sun and then a bunch of uniques with Corrupted Enchants, whatever. The way that you really get all of the damage is, is through the added Chaos Support Gem. Because of the change to Poison and the way that Quill Rain works, Quill Rain's um, less weapon damage doesn't actually affect the poison because it's all calculated differently. So all you really care about is poison chance on the tree, um, poison duration, and poison damage. Then you just go for all the nodes which have nice ailments and attack speed and movement speed, so on and so forth. Stuff like heavy draw becomes incredibly good with all the attack speed, helps stack up the poisons, increase damage with ailments and a bunch of frenzies, and you're good to go. The more traditional chaos nodes you'll see are actually fairly weak for the build. Um, you can see the total poison DPS um, would only go up, for example, by 6.9% um, from these four usually very powerful chaos nodes. So you don't want to build this character the way you normally would approach one of these kinds of builds. Um, you want to be focusing mostly on the poison stuff as you can get them. Um, so you can see the single 30% um, damage with poisons and poison duration is substantially more DPS than this entire cluster. Um, if you can get some of the good, like, one-point chaos nodes, great. That really isn't what you're building around. For ascendancy options, you have a few different ways of doing it. You can go for a CI setup with an occultist using shenanigans with Void Beacon. You can go for Trickster, you can go Deadeye, Raider and Pathfinder are both fine, or you can go for Scion. There is also an argument to be made for Berserker, but we really don't need more Berserkers at the moment. I've opted for Scion for a few reasons. One, this will be a character I'll be playing duo alongside my friend Kane, who will be doing a CI Occultic Caustic Arrow character. The plan was to stack um, the Chaos Reduction of Void Beaker, plus the um, Chaos Pen from Scion Occultist. However, we might just make him go full Tricurse setup, and I might instead go uh, Guardian. My personal DPS will suffer. Um, however, by having him investing in all of the curses, we both get more efficient trees, we'll have more than enough damage, and then I get to feed him Frenzy Charges, and I will also have 75% reduced curse effectiveness uh, on me at all times which means that I can do some pretty cool shenanigans. Early Weakness, for example, I would only require eight additional resists, between eight and nine, to be Ellie Weak capped. Um, so, what are the supports? What makes it work? We build around two key items, the Dendrobate chest piece 
and the Embalmer gloves. This is where most of my problems I've had with other people's builds. A lot of people are doing stuff with snake bites. Snake bite usually gives you poison when you're at maximum frenzy charges, but it messes up your frenzy charge duration, makes the build feel less pleasant to play, and flat chaos damage is one of the largest forms of DPS for these builds. Use the Embalmer gloves instead. They have life on them. You want life. You want to have an actual build. The builds I've seen have like 4k HP, 5k HP. No, that's like not a build. You want builds with life, flat chaos. The gloves give you a five link, meaning you can run either a pure tornado shot setup in your chest or a tornado shot in your gloves, barrage in your chest, depending on what content you're doing. You can go pure tornado shot for everything if you're not going to be doing stuff like crazy guardians or shape if you like doing that. Use a five link tornado shot and a seven link barrage through the dendro bait. Again, Helm Enchant depends on what you care about. Barrage Helm Enchant for single target bossing. Tornado Shot for just map play, which is probably what I'm going to try and aim for, but I currently have a Tornado Shot plus two Helm and additional Barrage to Botos right now. But yes, so the gloves give you Vile Toxins. Vile Toxins is one of the many new very powerful supports. And interestingly enough, both GMP and LMP are DPS increases. Because the way that poison works out you don't really care about the initial hit and you no longer lose damage from the um projectile penalty projectile damage is like nothing for your build anything which adds more projectiles is your main source of damage so you want like corrupted bows corrupted quivers dying suns helm enchants lmp gmp i'm gonna mess around with setups using both you'll probably just use gmp just because there are so many other very powerful support gems added chaos gives you the largest brunt of your damage um, lesser poison is another huge DPS increase. I'm getting it from the chest for my seven link setup, and then you have to link it into your glove setup. Then you have unbound ailments, deadly ailments, vile toxins, all is very large multipliers. Damage on full life is your next largest multiplier, then going into swift affliction. You can also use chain with no uh, real loss to your damage. Same with fork. So those are also things you can experiment with to increase your overall single target. Because again, if your stuff is chaining um, on any boss with adds, that means more projects are hitting the boss. You just need to mess around and play with it. With a totem, very, very important. And when you mess around with this in Path of Buildings, that's why people get confused on how to work, calculate stuff. When you select your wither, work out what stack count you want to put it at. By default, it's on a stack of one, put it up to five, 10 or 20 on how much faster casting increased duration you really sick it will have in your build and again options for the sign which are very powerful dead eye occultist guardian you can do shenanigans with trickster but i've explained why you go for occultist why to go for guardian another important thing for the occultist only go for the occultist option if you have curse on hit gloves you will shred through stuff so quickly that a blasphemy radius won't be enough you will be off screening mobs so you need to have curse on hit gloves to get this up reliably. As for different trees you can take and how you can root it, um, I have a few different trees that I'm picking between currently. I have a Resolute Technique Scion. Um, a Resolute Technique obviously is a fairly large DPS increase since we are not a crit build. Crit doesn't do much for us. So it's pretty good if you're near it. However, you can get away without it because of your very high attack rate. So the benefit of doing a just pure life rt base is you then can mess around with your auras you can run purities to fix your resist because you're obviously very resist starved however saying that um you have the option of thief's torment which has up to 34 all well 35 all resistances and the reason why you use thief's torment is for the insane life gain on hit again if we go back in game with how quickly you are attacking, with how many projectiles, this is also without frenzy charges, each arrow that hits a target will heal you for, um, I believe the max roll is 60 life. You can see, well, that's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, you can see that in Path of Building, we have just shy of 6,000, um, and that's just poor life on hit. And this also works the same way with the mana on hit from Thief's Torment, meaning you have infinite sustain, which is also why Mind Over Matter is a very strong option. For rooting these trees, there are a few different ways of doing it. You can also come in this way, much like my current character. There are lots of ways you can go back and forth. 
I've tried to make this as hardcore viable as possible. You can get this build up to 3, 3.5, 4 million um, tooltip DPS if you're playing like a 1k HP build. That isn't realistic. You can also mess around with Raider. Raider has very good DPS numbers. However, only while at Frenzy Charges are uh, active. And depending on how you want to build for it, great. However, you are much squishier. For Softcore, I would probably recommend some kind of Raider action. Just because it will move the fastest. It will feel the smoothest. Um, but you will be substantially less tanky. The RT version was looking at like 6.5k, 6.8k depending on your jewels. The mom version is looking at like 5 uh, point, well just shy of 6k life actually, plus like 2,000 odd mana. Obviously fairly uh, tanky. And then berserk options. I wasn't really too happy on how I was to root the berserker tree. It looks kind of stupid. But some weird shenanigans like this. This is really the core of your damage comes in this part of the tree. By picking up all of these nodes, picking up your poison nodes, picking up your ailment attack speed nodes, stuff like quick steps actually very strong, um, and stuff like berserking is also very, very strong. One other thing I will note, all the two-handed nodes, the ailments from attack deals while wielding a two-handed weapon, those count as two-handed weapons. So for example, you can take these two nodes, and it's a pretty sizable DPS increase, and it works with both. So basically, any cluster which offers two-hand damage with ailments works for you. This opens up a lot of very interesting options, and it makes a lot of things pretty interesting. There are lots of things which you wouldn't think would work, which do actually work for you. This is just a very rough plan and outline of the character I will be making. I'm throwing it out there because I've recently seen that Noogie is actually planning a similar build. Um, if he gets round to it or not, I don't know. But I just wanted to put my thoughts out there so I could see how my build compares to, you know, someone like Noogie, who's someone I very much respect when it comes to messing around with theory crafty stuff. I would probably recommend collecting your gear sooner rather than later, however, because if I start streaming this, Noogie starts streaming this, then people start buying up like this really obscure items and corruptions. These are the kind of builds where you kind of want to have everything bought already. And you want to be stacking up jewels with life, resist, poison. You need a pretty GG pair of boots with as much resist on it as possible. Same with your belt options, Muchos Resistorinis. Other uniques which are worth considering. Um, for the quiver, you can go for either Maloney's or Soul Strike. If you have the bleed active, Maloney's is the best DPS um, quiver. It also has a lot of life. It has some chaos res on there. Otherwise, Soul Strike has just flat chaos, which is very powerful. You can mess around with some kind of hybrid tricks to build. That could be fairly interesting. I tried mapping out a pure CI variant and just wasn't happy with the skill tree. Um, amulet wise, you probably just want to use Abyssos. A rare amulet with the Elrion Flat Chaos Craft with the Percent Chaos Envy Craft is also very powerful. You can also use Malagaro's Cruelty. This is a very good DPS increase. It basically gives you the trickster effect. You get increased damage and poison duration um, for your frenzies and power charges. The one thing I will say about this ami, which is kind of a trick, with how rapidly you attack, you will never really kill things with fewer than five poison stacks. Again, going back in game, you attack so rapidly that everything instantly has hundreds um, of stacks on it. Again, you need to take into account that you're firing two secondary tornado shot projectiles onto tornado shot onto plus one bow, plus one quiver, dying sun. So, yeah. There's lots of things going on there. And then you want to mess around with Chain and Pierce and all these other shenanigans. You're never really going to be getting the power charges. So you will need an additional source of power charges to really make the most out of this bad boy. But it really is pretty OP, OP, OP. Um, and much like if you don't care about the Thief's Torment setup, you can also go for um, just whatever rings with, again, the Flat Chaos Craft, Percent Chaos Craft. If all you care about is stroking that juicy juicy e -peen. so yeah you can make these builds pretty silly have some fun with it if you have any suggestions do let me know expect a proper build guide for both this and my emulate tornado shot slayer in the next few days i'm taki have a good day bye bye